Hi, I'm Michael Feinstein, and welcome back to In the Archives with our incredible director of our archives, Emily Raposa. Hi, it's so nice to have you back here with us. Thank you, nice to be here, and nice that you have a great song named after you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> by by uh, Johnny Mandel and Johnny mm -hmm. Mercer, the two great Johnnies of the 60s and beyond. Mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> but neither of those guys wrote enduring Christmas songs. Unfortunately not. <laughs> but Johnny Mandel was Jewish, and he still mm -hmm. didn't write a hit Christmas song, and that's the thing that we're going to talk about today, among other things. Yes. That there is Christmas music that is so special to everyone, mm -hmm. and yet when one looks at the, the hit Christmas songs, many of them are written by Jewish songwriters. And um, these are examples of that. It's quite interesting that um, in the early... 1930s, there weren't many uh, secular Christmas songs that were popular. Uh, most people sang things like Come All Ye Faithful or uh, religious Christmas songs. And then it wasn't until Irving Berlin uh, wrote White Christmas that the floodgates opened for Christmas music, even though one of the earliest Christmas hits is Santa Claus is Coming to Town, which became popular because Eddie Cantor sang it on radio in around 1934 at the urging of one of his children because he thought it was a kind of a silly, sappy song, which it is, uh, but it became a huge hit, and that was the early power of radio to popularize a song like this. Uh, how many pieces of Christmas music do you th think we might have in this collection? Is there, does anybody know? The short answer is no. We have quite a bit of Christmas music, and like you said, it is so surprising to do just a little bit of digging and to find that Jewish heritage kind of behind all of these songs. But I do have to tap on this. You mentioned White Christmas, and we have kind of a little special display here for White Christmas, um, not just some sheet music like we have our other songs, but we do have Rosemary Clooney's arrangement of White Christmas as well. Ah, yes. This arrangement is one of the few surviving orchestrations from Rosemary Clooney's library mm -hmm. uh, because sadly her music library was thrown into a dumpster many years ago, so the fact that this has survived is something special. And I believe that this is the vocal part, and we have the full thing, of her commercial recording for Columbia Records arranged by Percy Faith mm -hmm. when she made the movie White Christmas with Bing Crosby. and. The song had become such a huge hit in the 1940s that it was Irving Berlin's idea, I believe, to create a film called White Christmas. And Rosemary Clooney and Irving Berlin were very close friends, became that, especially because he loved the way that she sang his songs. Mm -hmm. And at the conclusion of the filming, he gave her this snow globe. Do you want to shake it? I can. Or would you shake it? I of course. Say. And so this was given by the composer and lyricist of White Christmas to Rosemary Clooney. And it has, with a little sterling silver plaque, the notes, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Isn't that special? And we have it here at the foundation. Mm -hmm. So many other songs we that uh, are Christmas standards. These two songs, Emily, mm -hmm. do you know what these two songs have in common? Christmas Song and Let It Snow. I do not. Well, of course, they both have been in the, the top ten of mm -hmm. the all-time famous Christmas songs, and they both were written by Jews, b music and lyrics, music and lyrics, mm -hmm. uh, even though uh, Mel Torme did not speak much about his Jewishness. Sure. Uh, but these two songs were both written in Hollywood, California, mm -hmm in June or July during a heat wave. So Let It Snow was written by Sammy Kahn and Julie Stein because they were so damned hot. They said, let's write a song that will make us feel cooler. And they wrote this thing, and it turned out to be a, a Christmas standard. Apparently it worked. Yes, and this one was written in the same period where it was just so hot that they wanted to write something about Christmas. But also, songwriters knew that you don't wait till December to write a Christmas song because you have to have it ready to go. So it has to be printed and published mm -hmm. and hopefully recorded. And so uh, they had to get the, uh, the jump on all of that. So, so there's that. 
And it's interesting because, like, you see published by Burke and Van Usen, right. two huge Christmas, uh, two huge writers who did not have particular Christmas hits. Mm -hmm. uh, Johnny Mercer never had a Christmas hit. Cole Porter never right. had a Christmas hit. Uh, the Gershwins never had a Christmas hit, but that, that was earlier on. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when a guy would have a Christmas hit, like Johnny Marks, who wrote Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, he spent the rest of his career almost exclusively <laughs> writing Christmas songs to the exclusion of all else, and he wrote dozens and dozens and dozens of Christmas songs, including this one, The Night Before Christmas Song, mm -hmm. and he wrote Rudolph goes to Hawaii for Christmas, I mean, whatever. I mean, he just kept <laughs> writing Christmas songs. Uh, Livingston and Evans, Silver Bells, that was written for a Bob Hope movie. Mm -hmm. uh, Sleigh Ride is half Jewish because uh, right. Mitchell Parrish, who wrote the lyrics, was Jewish. Laurie Anderson, who wrote the music, was not. So there's all these different um, permutations. J. Fred Coots uh, was Jewish. I'd like to find you in my stocking. I don't know this. Should we discover we this? We just sometime? found this, and I went, oh, I have to pull this. <laughs> this is fantastic. Goldmine music. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it did not become a hit. And Goldmine <laughs> music is probably not in business anymore. Mm. So um, this is um, just a drop in the bucket of, oh, it and is, this. And, and this is my childhood growing up with Andy Williams, so I had to pull one of the arrangements, um, the most wonderful time of the year. And this is for um, Andy and for the Osmonds to perform. Oh, wow. It says Christmas special number two, 1967. So this is the original arrangement mm -hmm. from which the song was performed for television. And, and this doesn't exist anywhere else except in our archive. So um, we feel very, very blessed to have it. And uh, that song was written by George Weil, who was uh, Andy's musical director and was Jewish. And so uh, we hope that all of you, as you celebrate the holidays, will appreciate the multicultural aspect mm -hmm. of what music brings to all of us as something that unites the heart and the mind and the soul. So let's wish everybody happy holidays. Absolutely. Happy, happy holidays. holidays.